first of all, chat, we do have our patch. All right. So uh, starting off with Overwatch Classic. If anybody doesn't know, I'll, I'll read it right now. For both new and seasoned Overwatch fans, this three-week event beginning November 12th right now offers a chance to step back in time and experience the thrilling origins of Overwatch. Revisit iconic maps, enjoy the original hero roster featuring their classic abilities, and embrace the chaotic fun of 6v6 with no limit team composition. So that's exciting. Uh, Warcraft 30th anniversary to commemor commemorate three decades of Warcraft. Log in anytime from November 15th to the 22nd and receive free rewards as a celebration gift. So there you go. So that's actually on the 15th. And now we have our hero update. So things I'm, I'm hoping for, okay? Before I get into any of this stuff where we read anything. I, I would love to see an adjustment to Widow's fall-off range. Widow's become a huge problem in top 500. Okay? A huge problem. So I'm hoping for, like, something there. Uh, and no Orisa, Roadhog, or Mauga buffs in any which way, whatever, at all. There should be none. Uh, that's what I'm hoping for is before I read any of this stuff. All right, here we go. Doomfist. Uh, rocket Punch. Uh, angle required for Wall Slam increased from 44 to 55 degrees. Just to kind of give everybody here a little bit of feedback on this one. Um, that means that it went from 44 degrees to 55 degrees, all right? Uh, Meteor Strike, ultimate cost reduced by 8%, and the healing per second while in the air increased from 75 to 90. There we go. Okay, Junker Queen, who is so fun to play. I don't know, where would they go with Queen here? Because Queen isn't the most played hero, so, like, Queen's good. I feel like if you nerf Queen, let's see. Jagged Blade, base projectile size reduced from 0.2 to 0.15. Okay, so they nerfed, they nerfed Jagged Blade. And then Adrenaline Rush is now 2.5 to 2.25? Although she's not the most... <laughs> I gotta love the dev comment. Although she's not the most played, Junker Queen is the top performing tank at the moment. These adjustments are aimed at tuning her, tuning her down slightly by reducing her self-healing and making the knife throw require more accuracy. I swear, if they're gonna nerf Queen, then they better nerf Widow fall off damage to an extent. Just an extent. I'm not even asking for, like, get rid of one-shots. I'm just asking for... Because if they're going to nerf Queen, then they got to adjust other stuff there. Because this, this is just like a random... All right, next up. Next up, we have Malga. Overrun cooldown reduced from 6 to 5 seconds. And charge movement speed increased by 15%. Developer comments. Malga has been underperforming for a while now. So we're putting some power into perhaps his most engaging ability, Overrun. Uh-oh, chat. I can already see it now. They're going to release a tank on Season 14. They're going to release a tank Season 14. And you know what they're going to do? They're going to buff the other tanks that nobody wants to have to deal with, and then we're going to end up not being able to play the new tank. <laughs> this is going to happen, I'm telling you. It's going to be the worst timing. They're not going to be able to resist. They're like, okay, Mauga's still underperforming. Orisa's win rate's low. Let's buff them both! Let's buff them both! And then the new tank is in a struggle, and they're going to be like, what's going on here? I, I, I so, like, listen, it's not that big of a deal, but, man, uh, they, 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 can, we, they, they can't stop with the memes on the micro buffs of these three tanks that we've mentioned before. And then they nerf Queen to go with it. It's all, it's all good. All right. So that's your tank changes. I mean, I didn't expect too many tank changes. I, I do like that they're they're helping Doom a little bit. Junker Queen, I don't know. I, I think Queen, leave Queen untouched for a bit. Like, here's my take. If a hero is fun to play and there isn't many complaints about the hero at the time, it's probably fine to leave Queen as is. I haven't seen many people complaining about Queen, to be honest with you. So it's okay to let the... I don't know. I, I, I think Queen's fine as is, but the data is showing otherwise. Um, Mauga, yeah, it's, it's, it, it, this is, Overrun's pretty good, so, anyway. Next up, we have Hanzo, um, Stormbow, time to fully charge decrease from 0.87 to 0.80, so a little bit better for Stormbow, just your click. Yeah, Dragon Strike, now damages enemy buildable objects. Okay, the Dragon Strike change enables it, it to damage non-player entities, such as barriers, turrets, traps, and mines. This should increase its usefulness when not eliminating the opponents as it can help clear the battlefield of other obstacles as well. Does this get rid of, um, I, I, I don't know, is, is Lamp considered a buildable? Yeah, is Life Weaver Tree considered a buildable? Because if that's the case, this is good. Because, like, this is actually a really huge change for Hanzo. Because if you can kill Lamp and, like, and stuff like that, like, I like this change. I think, I think that's actually, that's going to make Hanzo a lot more relevant, if I'm going to be completely honest with you. That's really good. Next up, we have Junkrat. Cooldown increase from 7 to 8 seconds on the Concussion Mine. Eh. Junkrat's been getting some one-shot combo, so I get it. We're increasing the cooldown of Concussion Mine to reduce frequency of both Junkrat's mobility and burst damage combo. I get it. It's just a, it's just a get rid of the Junkrat like, combo thing they're doing. Reaper, Lifesteal reduced from 35 to 30%. The added survivability from the, um, 
This passive is being tuned down now that Reaper has 300 health and more reliable mobility after the cast time reduction to Shadow Step. I think this is fine. I think this is fine. And let me explain why. I, I as Although I don't see a huge uptick of Reaper gameplay in top 500 games, I do know that a lot of people in chat have brought up how Reaper's really strong in a lot of ranks. So this is one of these moments where being in top 500, I'm like, I'm like, okay, I, 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 whatever, it is what it is. But I do know that a lot of people have mentioned that Reaper is very strong in metal rank, so this this makes sense to me. Um, this makes a little bit of sense to me. It, and this isn't a huge nerf, it just gets, it's like a 5% health difference on that one. Like, I don't think it's that big of a deal, but they needed to do something, so I get this one. I, I get this one, right? Tracer, recall, cooldown, reduced from 13 to 12 seconds. Um, yeah, that's fine. The top 500 players will dominate as Tracer no matter what the changes are. It doesn't mean that in metal ranks, Tracer will. I, I, I'm okay with that. It's just the recall is an extra second. Why though? Because I, because straight up, I think it's just Tracer does well in top 500, but doesn't do as well in a lot of ranks. So it just gives you one second. This is, these are very minuscule changes. 13 seconds to 12 seconds is what it is. All right, Wanda Wit. Okay. On to a hero like Widow. On to Ana. Okay. Biotic rifle damage and healing increase from 70 to 75. That'll be good. This damage value has gone back and forth a few times as it's, as it's a significant breakpoint for the number of shots to eliminate some heroes. How much HP does Widow have? That doesn't, does that change any breakpoints? Or is it 175 on Widow now? 200 HP? Ah, so it doesn't change anything. Yeah, it wouldn't change anything for Widow. Okay, I was just wondering. But I mean, honestly, good I mean, good change for Ana players. You get increased healing, you get increased damage. You can, you can duel people a little bit more. Good change for, good change for Ana. All right, on to Juno. Orbital Ray ultimate cost increased 10%. Now, chat, out of curiosity, remember before they made any Juno change, what was I saying the one change they needed to make out of anything before anything else? What was the, what was the, what was the one change we, I said there was one change that should have been, that was the number one issue, and it was exactly what it was. The cost of the ultimate. It wasn't the, it wasn't the ultimate being this, the ultimate strong, it's a really good ultimate, but it was how quickly you got the ultimate. That's why I wanted to see that first before they did anything else. So, here we are. Uh, ultimate cost increased by 10%. Uh, developer comments, Juno was the top tier meta support hero and was overperforming last season. Orbital Ray has proven to be one of the more impactful ultimate abilities. So we're reducing how frequently it comes up. I would have went from this from the get-go, but I'm glad they're doing it. it, it, it by the way, I, I know that they've been making a lot of changes to Juno. For any Juno player, you're going to be fine. This is, Juno is still going to be top tier. This, you know what this is going to bring? This is going to bring Juno from S plus tier to S tier. So there you go. Juno's still going to be good. Kiriko. Kunai recovery time decreased from 0.55 to 0.5. Okay. Swift step cooldown reduced from 8 to 7. And protection Suzu cooldown reduced from 15 to 14. So this is just a pure Kiriko buff. I'm going to be... Okay. Now listen. I'm going to be real with y'all. And, and, and some of y'all will agree with me. Some of y'all will disagree with me. I'm going to be honest with you. I actually get it. I, I don't know. For people who have played Kiriko recently. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this now. For people who have played Kiriko recently, Kiriko definitely has felt a little bit worse. Now, I'm not saying that I'm not saying that they go this aggressive, but Kiriko has felt like it's like in top 500 once again because I, I want to talk about this. In top 500, we're gonna make Kiriko work, right? And actually, Kiriko isn't even in the meta right now. It's it's a lot of just Juno, Brig, and then Ana as a uh, instead of Juno for like a Winston comp. So Kiriko started to kind of fall off a little bit over time. So what they're doing now is rather than micro buff all these over the next patch and a half, they said, you know what? Here we go. And then with season 14, they're going to be doing the, uh, they're going to be doing the Kiriko Mythic part two, where they do another Kiriko. No, I'm just kidding. But this is just because Kiriko has been struggling a little bit. Kiriko's a, a straight up, Kiriko's played a lot. Like we, we can tell this. This is why they do a lot of different, Kiriko is a played hero, right? And they want to just put Kiriko at this. So it's one of those things where I get it and I still think this, that Juno should, in theory, still be the go-to pick. That's that's where I see it, though. Um, once again, I could be wrong, but yeah. I, I think this just makes it a little bit better for Kirk. All right, next up, we have Life Weaver. Life Grip cooldown reduced from 19 to 18 seconds. I don't have any problems with that. Kaelin increased from 50 to 75, so just a straight-up net buff. Tree of Life. Time before overhealth begins to drain when out of range increase from 2.5 to 6 seconds. You said, speaking of that, weren't there supposed to be a soldier buff? You thought heroes got buffed for the mythic stuff? Nah, nah, you know what, Gavin? We're on to you now. That's why, he didn't, that's why, that's why there's no soldier buffs. 
Y'all thought you were getting away with it. We were on to you. So you, you had to stop doing that for this one. Next patch, you're going to bring up now. That's why you didn't do it, right? That's why you didn't do it, okay? Yeah, we see it. No, just, um, but yeah, Life Weaver is uh, yeah, just a good buff. I mean, I can read the dev comment, but I think this is, Life Weaver still needs help. I talked about it. I don't think Life Weaver is as bad as Life Weaver. As people have been putting Life Weaver out to me. We talked about this during my tier list, but I do think Life Weaver needed a little bit of help, and I'm okay with that. Straight up, like I'm, I'm okay with like Life Weaver getting. I, I want to see them if they can get Life Weaver to like that low B tier. That is where I think all heroes should end up, is like that low B tier, right? And I only say that because once you get into the B+, plus, the A tier, the astronomical S tier, that's where you run into issues. So if you can get Life Weaver to like a B- minus tier, that's a viable hero throughout. I don't know where this puts Life Weaver. I, I think like the Tree of Life change is very interesting, and I actually kind of like that. It allows for more... It allows you to use the Tree HP to then go be aggressive and make more plays. So I, I, I don't mind the idea. So... They're getting there. The problem with Life Weaver and the number one problem that will run with Life Weaver the, mo the whole time is that it's a very complicated kit to get full value out of. And when you look at the other supports, they bring a lot to the table. Um, like, basically, outside of, like, like for example, Moira kit is very chill, too. But Life Weaver is a very complicated kit. Like, you get in the value, getting your teammates to use your pedal. So, I get it. We'll see how it goes. I do like the Tree of Life Change, though. Tree of Life Change is pretty cool. Moira, self-healing increase from 24 to 30. Uh, this is just so that... What's been happening is a lot of players have been getting mad that their Moiras have been in the back line too much. This just keeps it, increases the survivability of those Moiras so the Moiras can go, hey, I'm still alive in the back line. You're all dead. What are you doing? This is just to help change that um, concept, okay? So that, that, that's where that is at right now. So there is your changes. Um, I don't know. I'm not really upset with the balance changes. Like, only thing that really frustrates me is that they didn't at least bring in the Widow like fall off range or just by a little bit just to give a little bit more of an even playing field for the other the other heroes but i i will say it, it, the reason why widow didn't get a change and i'll, I'll be completely transparent it's very it's very niche it's, it's a very niche issue in overwatch right now so they didn't have to change widow you get what i'm saying they didn't have to change Widow. like i just would have liked to see like you know what, what do they say throw us a bone you know bring bring it in like you know an extra 10 meters on on, on the fall off and then well, i'll still get one shot but i'll complain a little bit less right that's, that's all i wanted to see right all right on to the the fixes fixed an issue with cosmetic voice effects being heard by other players i've, I've been hearing so many things or i don't hear anything circa real fix an issue with circa real fix an issue with petra i haven't played that map in years anna just fixing some stuff for the mythic weapon ramacha oh, okay that's not a fix an issue where ramacha could recast barrier if he was stunned while casting the first one i've had that happen before and then Zarya fixed a rare issue where Zarya could avoid damage from a Reinhardt pin. All right, well, there you go. So there's your patch notes. I mean, honestly, they're fine. I, I, like I said, like, some of them, I didn't like the Queen nerf either. Um, but the data says most played. So there you go. There's your changes. It's a pretty stacked midseason patch when you when you kind of take into account that we have Overwatch Classic. So, <laughs> you know, take that into account. We're in a good spot.